how Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. You can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling.
I was born into it. My grandfather came in here in 1905. I want to continue the farm for him and generations to come. So. I think it's a privilege that we get to be here. It's just a wonderful way of life. You know, what job is there that you can go to work with your dad and brother, with your kids by your side? Doesn't get much better than that. Hey, wake up. There's so much out there to see. Look up, look down. Quick, look over there. Look for a little trouble, but not too much. Open your eyes to something new every day. The hustle, the bustle, the calm, the serene. Maybe then you'll see that sometimes you have to go far to get a little closer. So wake up. The day is far from over. Seize the days. We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Uh, more speed, more innovation. It's gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. This is what 5G looks like. Better, faster. Sounds like one more G, sounds pretty good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here and will continue improving through investments in network technology.
Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, font spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your stream curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. You can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling.
Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we are everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Sastel cares. Always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. That's questions about if our houses are painted or are they logo. Our events are always painted houses, but in the future coming out, I'm pretty sure we're going to be going to all logo houses. Uh, they're a great revenue source for any trilling club. You can get your advertisements on there. And usually after the first year, the houses are paid for it's all free money for you. So hopefully check it, check Jet Ice out for your future in-house look.
live as this uh, Gotye Kukui matchup continues. We were on the broadcast with uh, Colton Flash picking up a 7-2 to victory over Aaron Sluchinski in five ends. Colton Flash moves on to the A qualifier tomorrow at 2, playing against the winner of this matchup. Yeah, it's really nice to just sort of go from sheet to sheet and watch a bunch of games just like you're there, right? Well, you know, and, and in particular, in a case like this where we happen to, as, as the announcers, get a chance to look at both of the games that will factor into that A qualifier tomorrow afternoon. Uh, I, I, I'm supposed to be on the call for that game, so it's a nice chance to get a look at both of these teams. The, the Gautier team, very young. I haven't had a lot of chance to see them. And this Cooey team, new this year, so really, as much as we know all of the players on this team, uh, haven't had a great deal of chance to see them play together. Yeah, there was that that summer of change where all of the teams changed, and it's still taking a lot of time for me to get used to Team Kui using Botcher's front end and Team Botcher using Kui's front end. It's, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's impossible for me to remember uh until you see them all and say okay that's the team now how does the old saying go you can't tell the players without the without the program that's right <laughs> it does look to be the only rather competitive game on the ice tonight like you mentioned we were on the Colton Flash win. You got Scott Manners up six to one on Jason Jacobson. You got Ryan Lynn Clyder up seven to four on Jordan Peters, and Clyder's got hammer. So this is our competitive game. And a lot of rocks and, in play. And as we join the end in progress, had to get a had to get my bearings as to where we are. So it looks like uh Cooey with the last rock here as we play in the fifth and uh just the three stones left to come, two for Cooey, and Jack Gautier has one of his own. Kevin Cooey with his first, looking to come down. Needs to sit on the corner of that red, I believe. Not sure he can get second shot with it, but wants to leave his shooter in a good enough position that he might be able to make something for possibly as many as three on his last one if he gets a good corner here. This is going to have to curl, though. He's still on his own rock. Wanted to get by that one, sit on the corner of the red. They're looking for the la every last little bit of curl they can get. Nudges off of his own stone. Does leave himself a nice angle on the yellow-red, but maybe a little bit too much distance between them to do much with that. Certainly has left uh, Gautier the opportunity, if he wants to, to play the double on the yellows as well. The top two yells. He can't do much with shot rock, I don't think. Yeah, that's one of those shots you sort of look at. wasn't what your call was, but then you try to figure out, is that good? Well, what do you, what do you have right now if you're, if you're Jack yeah. Gauthier? Probably you've got the double on the two yellows or even just the nose hit on the one on the left-hand side as we look at from the overhead to take away the draw. That is the stone that uh, Kevin Cooey right now could tap up to get his deuce. Yeah, they're probably just, yeah, hit and sit might be the call. I don't think the double, you you, you double them and you leave them, like you said, that draw. He's the got button. the draw, yeah. Number two. Yeah, and, and uh, Kevin Koo's got a good angle on the yellow that he just threw, but I think when he didn't get down to the freeze, I think there's just too much separation between the yellow and the red to try to play that yellow back with any weight and uh, try to kill the two reds. Now, it is Kevin Cooey. Uh, yeah. there, is, there is a yellow guard out there that he could hit pretty much right on the nose. And, you know, if you're straight back on that yellow at the top of the eight foot, the two reds probably both go. But that's it's a probably long race. Yeah, it's probably one of those shots. What do you want him to leave? And if you leave him, if you hit this and you flop over and you freeze onto that yellow and you leave him a draw to the button for two and you're playing Kevin Cooey, you'd, 
probably pretty happy making him make that shot. You can't take away everything. Goche with his final stone looking for the hit. Wants to stay right there. Certainly doesn't want to roll to the outside at all. Does come up nicely at the end. Gets the hit and does roll over a couple of inches to the inside. Certainly no chance to, to drive that underneath the yellow and try to clip those reds now. So Kevin Cooey already with the broom down. Needing to make the wide out turn draw. See if he can catch what he can see of the button. And does almost need a sliver of the button to get his two points here. And like I said, this is the shot you wanted to throw for playing Kevin Cooey. Was playing a draw through a port on his first one, trying to get to a corner freeze. Didn't get the line he was looking for, but did have nice weight. No port to negotiate here, but still a tough shot to get the line that he needs. And a different enough path that he comes up well short. The shirt certainly didn't appear panicked on the brush. I don't know whether that might have caught something on the way down, but comes up well short. It's a single point for Kevin Cooey. And they'll tie things up after five ends. Jack Gauthier with the last rock when we come back in the sixth. Sean Joyce, Matt Sussman here joining you mid-game. Sixth in now underway. The IG Wealth Management Western Showdown. Kevin Cooey, Jacques Gauthier tied at three as we begin play here in the sixth end. Winner moves into a, a qualifying game at uh, 2 o'clock Saskatchewan time tomorrow afternoon. Loser will drop down to the B and continue to look for one of the eight playoff berths. 16 teams began play here in Swift Current this morning. Eight teams will advance to the playoff round beginning Sunday night and finishing up on Monday.
first stone of this end was thrown up as a center guard. That second stone into the rings, you saw the hit attempt to roll out. Now, I'm not sure that the uh, rock was called for into the rings because they're calling for us for a corner guard here. So I think uh, that rock in the rings was one that slipped in by mistake. Nice corner guard made there. This still the fifth rock of the end, so not able to make a play on it. We talked a little bit last end about the new team here for Kevin Cooey. This is the second. Bradley Thiessen, the lead is Carrick Martin. The youngster at third, Tyler Tardy out of BC and uh, Kevin Cooey the skip. Yeah, really interesting formation there. Um, obviously, the front end is familiar with one another. That's important. Um, Tyler Tardy is certainly a rising star in the curling ranks, for sure. And it, it's going to be a very interesting sort of, you know, uh, dynamic with one person on the upswing of his career and then Kevin Cooey, who has just been there for years and years. It's it's going to be really fun to watch. And so far, they've done pretty good. They've made a lot of... Uh, semifinals and finals of big events so so far so good Gautier's team probably pretty familiar with Tyler Tardy as well having done some battle during their junior careers Jack Gautier not far removed from junior play himself backed up by by uh the lead Alex Horvath this is the second Jason Ginter looking to make the run kills the stone off the top of the forefoot does leave the raised stone at the edge of the 12 foot the third for the Gauthier team is Sterling Middleton. And of course, Jacques Gauthier, the skip. Still leaves a guard near the center line. A chance for Bradley Thiessen to come around again. This time to sit two. A lot of room by the guard. This one might be a little bit strong. It's going to come to the back of the forefoot. And still probably half available, maybe a little more than half. Chance for Gautier to make a play on shot stone and try to stay for shot at the edge of the eight foot and uh, maybe put a, a rock back there that stops Kevin Cooey from trying to come around. You may have to make a play on the shooter if you can stay. Little sweep now from the offside. This is going to have to curl even to make contact. Boy, they might be better if it goes by. They almost mm. could have rubbed that in behind cover. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a change in uh, dynamic for this. Yeah, and, and completely... flips the end around in a hurry, doesn't it? Goes from looking at maybe a possible deuce the worst of possible force to now all of a sudden if uh tyler tardy can get a good draw to the top of the forefoot you got to be thinking about the possibility of steel here this one's got a lot of room by the guard though too starting to move now but again a little bit strong he's going to come down nudge off the uh shot stone and Sits too, but both in the back of the forefoot. So a chance for the Gautier team to come down and, you know, he signaled right in front of those stones, but I think he might want to just bite the top of the button enough to be shot rock. If you come all the way to the freeze, you're probably far enough behind this T line that uh, Kevin Kahui can freeze down on top of it again and be shot rock. Yeah, this end is certainly taking lots of turns left and right.
nice throw well judged by the brushers they did put that exactly where where we were just talking about you put that in the top half of the button the freeze now is no good for kevin cooey he still left himself some room to get a two yeah excellent spot there and can't really even anytime you're with on this yeah block. anytime you were drawing down like that i mean you weren't going to have a ton of room to get two anyway you've still got some room and really, it's, it's like you said, Matt, very tough for Kevin Cooey to do much with that rock. He's going to have to play to move it. And when he does, he's going to have to lose at least one of his own at the back. But if you don't play to move it on your first one, how do you ever deal with it? Exactly. So we're going to play quiet on this, it looks like. Yeah, I think he wants to get close to the nose. You, you, you'd hate to roll off here and leave a chance for uh, Sterling to come down again and sit a second one at the top of the button and again sweeping for some extra curl and this one's going to go by actually moves one of his own stones at the back of the forefoot that actually probably if anything helps kevin cooey a little bit that's how that other one was missed too when they yeah. just sailed it by and you know, combining that with the uh, some of those Kui stones behind the T-line, you got to wonder, maybe ice is either straightening out in that spot or something, but quickening up, who knows? But um, this is certainly, this feels like the end that's going to matter in this game for sure. Well, usually the sixth end in a tie game is, is pretty key. And it's an interesting situation because, of course, neither team really wants a blank here. The team with last rock is fine if they score one. Gautier had the broom down and then they discussed something else. I'm not sure if they're looking to move their own here or just freeze another one on there, just sit shot and third shot but leave everything angled onto the yellows. Kevin Cooey really wouldn't be able to make a play to move them then because he'd leave them sitting too. Well, you sure don't want to be short here, though. This was swept coast to oh, coast. He's got a nice line. Does tap it down towards mm -hmm. the yellow and leaves everything on the same line. So it is. Gautier sitting shot and third. Kevin Cooey yeah, can't really make a, a play on the shot that was just thrown because he'd leave them sitting first and second. So looking to run the guard back, and this is not without risk. Yeah, I think they just want to open it up and try to limit the damage. But Well, he's, he's running this back with that broom. He's going to try to pick the one off the button. Yeah. If anyone can do it. I was going to say it. There aren't many guys that would play this, but uh, this is one of the guys that can make it. He also hmm. knows the right way to miss it, so curls across the face and drives it by everything. Doesn't do any harm. Goche now looking... The possibilities. If you play red onto red onto yellow, does it clip the yellow at the back of the forefoot or not? The, uh, the fourth shot question. stone? I say it touches it. I don't think it... It, it depends on your, on your weight choice if it goes all the way. I think it at least uh, gives it a little nudge. Yeah, it's hard to say. I'm not positive that it touches it. And it and it is going to be tough to not leave a, at least a double on the reds, maybe a triple. Now, if you don't nudge the one at the back of the forefoot, Kevin Cooey may not need the triple. He may be able to get the double and sit two. Sean, would you almost consider playing it a little quieter and just leaving that pocket there? You definitely could, you know, 
tap to tap to freeze, sit two. And you lined it up once, if you line it up again. Yeah, it's really, it'd be the same shot really that Sterling Middleton just played. He came down, played the free, played the draw to the front of the forefoot on his first, tapped it up, and that's the two rocks you see there now on his, on his second. And if you could tap on that same angle about that same distance again, you would be sitting two and everything lined up to the yellows. And really, I don't know if there would be a double available for Kevin Cooey. Just looking at the scoreboard, Jeep Gauthier has had control of this game. Started with Hammer, scored their two. Cooey came back, scored their two. Gauthier blanked the third, traded singles, Hammer and even ends. That's just sort of a textbook um, you know, way to command this game. So that's a very impressive uh, start thus far, and it's clearly showing here in the sixth. And here's another chance to, yeah, put that pressure on and make yeah, Kevin think, Cooey find one of those miracle shots. I think they've opted for what you were looking at. Just play that basically the same shot Sterling Middleton played twice in a row. They had initially looked at playing a tap, and I'm not sure what kind of weight they were talking about playing, but they wanted to roll off. The danger in rolling off is you could leave, well, you'll leave it at least a double. And you might leave a triple. If you keep everything in that same line, I don't know if there'll even be a double there. Jack Gauthier, draw on the way. Looked like a bit of a soft release. This is really curling on him. Russia's doing a great job to hold it. They've got to keep it a little bit on the center line side if they can. Overcurls just a little bit. But really, all I see for Kevin Cooey is a double in the top two reds. He's going to leave Gauthier sitting shot, and he's going to have room to draw for his two points. I'm not sure what else Kevin Cooey's got. He's already facing two. Yeah, you, you nose double, and you leave your shooter right there. Maybe rolls roll half foot, and you're in the draw path a little bit. But you want to use that those corners and try to block a draw path some way to make that second point as hard as possible. Yeah, I don't see a way that you can eliminate shot stone. No, no, that's just it. You can you can make a double. The top two reds, the third one, even if you make contact with it, I don't think it's going anywhere. And really, if you try the triple and just jam it, which is probably what you're going to do, you're going to leave them all kinds of room to draw for two. Good look at it from the hack end facing the house. You can see a nose hit with the weight that Kevin Cooey can throw. Definitely makes the top double go away. And uh, as you said, Matt, with the corner guards on either side, and if you leave your shooter right there, it's a reverse stagger port to get in towards the middle. It's not going to be an easy draw there anywhere. Yeah, we'll see here. Wants to make the double and ideally stay right there. This is going to have to curl a little bit. He'll make the double, but shooter rolls away and leaves Jacques Gauthier room to get to the top of the button. He was never going to sit right there with that weight. They just must have wanted to make sure that they made the double. There, he could have hit that right on the beak, and, and it was just offline enough that he could make the double and sit right there. But yeah. Uh, Probably a little positive on the release. Certainly not going to curl any with that weight. Jacques Gauthier, I thought perhaps a little soft on his release on the last one, and the brushers did a great job to hold the line. And all the same. Better release on this them. one. Great end for them to have a shot for two here. Better release on that one, I thought. So the... Rushers can wait on this one. It'll just be a question of weight. They may be feeling it's a little strong because they're actually sweeping for curl, trying to make sure they get to the face of their own. It's going to touch it. 
Would have been a little bit strong, but he's got enough of his own stone to stay right there in the button. Picks up two points. Jacques Gauthier with a 5-3 lead over Kevin Cooey after six ends of play, and it'll be Cooey with last rock in the seventh. Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we're everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you, and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Sastel cares. Always has. Always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Cotier with a 5-3 lead as we begin play here in the seventh. First stone comes up just short of the rings. Don't know if they called for it in, but it acts as a center guard, just a little off center. Cooey called for the corner guard. Now the center guard being called for here by Jacques Cotier looking to get just a few inches closer to the center than the one in the back, but leave them overlapped a little. Pretty much right where he tapped his broom. Kevin Cooey now looking to use the corner guard. Yeah, a lot of opportunities for Cooey that last end to try to shut the door. And they just slipped a little bit deep, missed a missed a hit. Just some uncharacteristic shots out of them, and they Came out with a nice, impressive shot to hold them to two. But they got a chance here to get their two back. I sort of had a chance to see a little bit of Cooey's game this afternoon. Tried to uh, to jump into that one late as well and then had some technical glitches, so I wasn't able to watch the rest of the game. But they struggled... Uh, with Jordan Peters uh, earlier today. And the, the other thing that I want to take note of or make comment of from there, Kevin Cooey's at three layers again. He was at three layers this afternoon as well. And <laughs> I have had the opportunity to play in the Swift Current Rink. It has been a few years, but I do seem to recall it's it's on the cooler side for sure. Oh, braving the elements, as they say. Jason Ginter looking to come around the two center guards. Pressures were on this one early. And he's going to come up a little bit short. It does leave a third center guard. Kevin Cooey now sitting one behind the corner and a, a chance to bring a second one in now around those center guards. Well, early in this end, a chance for Bradley Thiessen, if he can bring a, a nice one in here, certainly a chance for two, and 
dare I say, even this early in the end, three could be in play. They certainly have enough guards to work with. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of overlap up there. I don't think there's going to be a play on any of them based on how they're angled. I don't know who would want to throw that shot, but it's certainly looking a little messy here to get a crooked number up there. This one's got a lot of room by the front. Really moving, though, now. Going to come up just a little bit short. Hmm. Tight enough to the rings that it's probably splittable. Stone at the back of the eight foot, uh, probably half exposed. And now with this being the seventh stone of the end, you don't have to worry if you crash the corner guard. It doesn't go back. So going to make a play at the shot stone. Makes the hit. The shooter rolls across to the back of the eight foot, well in behind all of those stones out front near the center line. Yeah, really nice result there. That's yeah, it's making the uh, blank look difficult. <laughs> There's a lot absolutely. of guards that would have to move to get that stone at the back. And the draw is not that much more comfortable either getting into the house. He's in a little light on his first attempt. See if he can make the adjustment here. Probably had to take a little bit more ice too to get around the one he just threw. Line looks nice. Well, he made a nice adjustment on that one. Pulls it into the top eight foot behind cover. Yeah, good recovery. That's That's got to feel good. And also, that's a really difficult rock to deal with. I, you can't really see any of it. I mean, you can come down to it, and that's about it. Needs to stay on the corner of this just to have a chance to move it through later on. If you ever got to the face, you still wouldn't be able to see it to make a play on it. Third stones now. This is Sterling Middleton. Made a couple of great draws last end. This one's got a lot of room by the guard. Does not want to bump off this at all. That's what he's going to do. Pushes that rock a little farther in behind and has left room for Tyler Tardy to make the hit and roll undercover. And then definitely three is in play. Motion by Kevin's broom. He might even try to come off his yellow a little bit, push that one even further in and roll up. Probably there. I don't know that you necessarily need to do that. I'm not even sure you want to do that, to be honest. If you roll across the top of that stone, and again, it's, it's a little tough to tell from camera angles. You almost have to be at the ice level to tell at the angles, but that yellow stone in front of the rings, not quite fully exposed. So I don't think you could see enough of it to run it back for the double right now. But if you try rolling across and you roll past that stone, then it probably is in the, in the path of a run back. Tyler Tardy with the hit, rolls across and... Oh. Does nudge them both, but that's the run double might be there now because you you couldn't see all of that stone. You can certainly see enough of it to run it onto the stone in the top of the eight foot now. Now, still, this is an all or nothing shot. If you don't make it here, everything is still buried. They were on this right away. 
Sterling Middleton with the run. Oh. Catches the stone at the top of the eight foot, but misses the one at the back in the four foot. And uh, that little spin back at the end, Kevin Cooey still sitting too. That was so close to hitting all three of them. I don't think there was any more space around the guard. I think that's the best he could have done. But like you said earlier, Sean, three might be in play. Oh, it's most definitely in play. Now you bury this when you're sitting three and really even the rock that's uh that second shot. Now the edge of the eight foot is, is partly underneath a corner guard, but really, I mean, if you bury this one in the middle, you, you play that third shot stone. He's coming around the middle again to sit three and now fours in play. So you, you make this draw around the middle and you're going to have to play something to the middle. Now this one, a lot of room by the guards again. Coming down to the back one. And that'll work to sit three, but it's it's not the ideal yeah. position. You know, you're sitting three. And, you know, people at home might be sitting there thinking, well, that's, that's an okay shot. But uh, Jack Gauthier can make this to the top of the forefoot. Just a slivering behind the guard. Kevin Cooey's going to have a tough time bringing either of those two eight-foot biters back into play. Needed something in front of the T-line there. Yeah, really interesting end here. You had a couple rocks come up light. You had one go, would have gone through if not for that one in the back. Big shot here for the young skipper. Facing three, he's got a two-point lead. Needs to get something in play at the top of the house. Needs full eight foot to make sure he's second shot. And if he could come right down and corner freeze that yellow, gets tough now even for Cooey to score too. Comes down, he's got second shot, just about full four. Certainly has shrunk the rings. You can't ask for much more than that. It's undercover. It's staying there. It's still, I don't think it eliminates the chance for two, but I think Jock would be very happy with a two going up on the board after the potential earlier in this end. I didn't see the indication from Cooey now. Are you looking here to, uh, to bring this in for second shot, or do you want to sit on the corner of that red? Because there still might be a chance to, if you sit... Uh, Say about a third frozen on the red. You can play the blast on your last one. And it would still be for three. I wouldn't put it past him, that's for sure. He probably doesn't want to play for two. That's one thing. So well, yeah, statistically, if you score two here, you're still going to lose probably about 60% of the time. Not able to get the line for the freeze now. Did he leave room for the double? It's interesting because uh, I'm looking at the players in the house and Sterling Middleton the third, who is the guy that doesn't have to throw this stone, is looking at the double. <laughs> and Jacques Gauthier <laughs> has not walked over there yet at all because there's danger in attempting the double. But if you ever hit it too thin, you could catch mm -hmm. your own stone. And, then that and Kevin possibly sets yeah. up four. And Kevin can still use that rock. It didn't have oh, for quite sure. the line that he wanted, but I mean, he can absolutely use it. So, well, you know, and if you nose hit, he's he's left a double. Mm -hmm. So, what are you doing here? You throw the guard. Kevin Cooey is almost certainly running something in, and it could be for four. There is a, a yellow corner guard that he could run in. He puts that onto the yellow that he just threw, and probably one of the two of them's hanging around if he clips the red. Well, there's there's different there's certainly two types of shots. There's the shot that you want to play, and then there's the shot you have to play because you're playing Kevin Cooey. And 
that changes things dramatically. Just like you said, you don't want to leave him that one shot where he's going to get big points. If it was anybody else, yeah, you, you might guard. But they got to be super careful here. They have to find that next level shot that's going to ensure that all they can get is two. They did look at it, and it looks like there's room to play the hit and roll underneath, and any portion underneath will be enough to, to line up the two reds onto the yellow. The thing that I have to believe that the hesitation here from, from Jack Gauthier is he does not want to hit this on the nose. You hit it on the nose, and definitely there's a double there. And it's for at least three because he, he actually might even be able to make it and hold his shooter. So you're thinking, is there any space for him to roll underneath? Oh, I, I think there is. It looks like there's an inch or two of air and he doesn't have to roll much underneath. Get a sliver undercover and, and uh, the middle red is going on to the yellow all day. Looks like they've opted to, this has got to be a guard. Yeah. Unless he's, unless he's trying to draw corner freeze the inside of that yellow, that's a possibility. Well, you could probably, Sean, you could ostensibly throw a guard that's both blocking the shot and blocking that run. Uh, maybe. I don't think so. And and if no. you're out there, then it's you're you're probably able to nose hit the guard straight back and and make the shot that way. The angle raise is coming from a long ways out there. Pretty hard to direct, to take the direct shot yeah. away and take away the angle raise. So he, he's true. opted for the guard, just probably because it's the uh, most risk free shot yeah. that he had to try. It does leave the option for Kevin Cooey, and I'll be honest, I'll be shocked if he doesn't run it back. Because it's for at least three if you make it. Do they see something else? Do they think they can see enough of the red? I don't think they can. It's funny, yeah, it looks I like th I don't even see them looking at the angle run on the on the yellow corner guard. And to me, it looks like it's for four. There is some danger playing it that you might clip it onto your own and not even get one, but. He's looking at this. It's got to be a double run that he's looking at here. Red onto red. So he drives the second red pretty much straight back and picks the red off the top of the forefoot. So looking wow. at hitting the high red guard just to the center line side of that stone, driving it back onto the wider of the red guards and, and attempting to drive it straight back and, and pick that the right highlight reel for of this one. Foot. Final stone here for Kevin Cooey. Looking for kind of a pinball shot. Gets a pinball shot the other way. Wow. <laughs> That's uh, plan C or D down the list. Manages to get his deuce out of it. So we're all tied up after seven ends. On the other hand, for Jack Gauthier, still has last rock in good shape coming home. We ask Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Uh, more speed, more innovation. It's gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. This is what 5G looks like. Better, faster. Sounds like one more G, sounds pretty good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here and will continue improving through investments in network technology. Hey, 
Wake up. There's so much out there to see. Look up. Look down. Quick, look over there. Look for a little trouble, but not too much. Open your eyes to something new every day. The hustle, the bustle, the calm, the serene. Maybe then you'll see that sometimes you have to go far to get a little closer. So wake up. The day is far from over. Seize the days. Sean Joyce, Matt Sussman here with you from the IG Wealth Management Western Showdown in Swift Current. Eighth end just underway. Jacques Gauthier, Kevin Cooley all tied at five. Gauthier with the last rock here as we play the eighth end. Derek Martin just... through the center guard with his first one and looking to come around and they wanted to keep this in front of the T-line, but it's going to slide a little deep on them. Yeah. A little mistake there, but I think we, we can't quite <laughs> put that seventh end out of our minds quite yet. That was a very exciting end, and it left uh, Kevin Kouya shot for big points. And even with a, a half miss, he still somehow scored two out of it. Yeah, so. it was a, it was an interesting final shot, and I, I was just glancing through the chat during the, the break, and I see a comment from somebody said, called and made. That was not remotely <laughs> close to what he called. <laughs> You don't have to tell anyone else that, though. You can just say that you made the shots. It uh, it worked out for them. They got two, and boy, it almost worked out well enough to get three. If they pushed that rock a little further to the side, they had a, a third at the back of the eight foot. They did kill their own at the side of the eight foot, but they still had one at the back of the eight foot that could have counted for three. But mm -hmm. Maybe fortunate for Shagoji, that stone was so high up in the rings, it didn't get behind the T-line, so the Kui team couldn't sweep it over. They just had to watch it, and it, and it came to rest in time. It was just two. Absolutely. So the two center guards up now looking to come around again. This time, desperately needs to keep it in front of the T-line. and does just bite the top of the forefoot. So it's Gauthier sitting two. Did not really get that dead in behind the guards, though there's room to come around from the outturn side. Or, <laughs> here's a left-hander for you. Room to come around from the intern side. <laughs> yeah. You know, as, as, as a fellow lefty, I just don't even bother with intern and outturn anymore because it's <laughs> confusing even for me. I was very happy when they just went to clockwise and counterclockwise. That's the same for everybody. Yeah, but... And and I'll admit, Matt, I, I don't I don't know that I've asked you how old you are, but there's a number of the younger generation that have never worn anything but a digital watch, and they don't know which turn that is. <laughs> I turn forty next year, so I'm. Well, you're I'm, okay then. I I remember a lot of things that are completely obsolete. Everybody on Gauthier's team is too young. That's right. Gets shot this rocking left just to the back of the button. Kui this won't mind that typical. one being deep. Not really what you normally see out of an eighth end when it's tied, but every rock is in play so far. Well, you certainly expected the the Kui team to play the two center guards, and and every team's a little bit different. Uh, you would have thought perhaps that the Gochi team has played together enough that they might be uh, might feel comfortable playing ticks, but apparently they didn't. So their uh, option is to come around and. Unfortunately for them, it's that first stone that came to the back of the forefoot is going to probably cause them some trouble before this end is over. Oh, a nice try at the double peel just drives it by the second stone. So it is Kui continuing to sit one right now. He's got one center guard protecting the shot rock. Shot rock is at the back of the button. Again, they don't mind that they came deep on the draw attempt. Still lots of time for Cooey to try to do, get something going in the middle. Thought you might see him throw another center guard here. You know that Gauthier is going to try the peel. 
Yes, perhaps the thinking that uh, that guard that's there is not much deeper than halfway. Hard to get uh, a second guard up and get much separation. You'd have to be just over the hog line. Yeah, it's a risky shot. I mean, obviously, you got to take risks when you don't have hammer in the eighth and it's tied. Uh, that is a stone that can certainly hurt him. Yeah, it is. It's not necessarily when he needs to move this early, but again, it's it's hard to throw the second guard and not leave a double peel. And if you can get to the inside of this stone, tap that red back to the back of the forefoot somewhere, your, uh, your shooter, which would be top eight, essentially acts as a guard for that shot stone at the back button. Room by the guard. As soon as he's by, they'll switch the sweep to the other side, try to get a little bit of a flop underneath if they can, just like that. Oh, wonderful. That's a team shot right there. That is beautiful. Yeah. And that stone at the top of the eight foot, essentially in this situation, is basically just a guard. You, you never expect to count with that stone, but it's protecting the shot stone at the back of the button right now. And he got more separation playing it that way than he ever could have throwing a second guard up long. Plus, it's a little riskier now if Gauthier is running the, the double and it looks like he's trying it. It'll be a little thin on the first one, just drives it by everything in the house. Game on. Well, this is almost a good enough situation for Kevin Cooey that he might be content to just guard this all the way through to his last one. And it certainly doesn't leave a lot of room for. Uh, Shot Gauthier if he had to draw with his last one. It's probably there, but it's not easy. A lot of rocks to come before that, though. And this young team out of Manitoba, strong hitters. So if you leave them any kind of angle to make the double, they don't even care if it jams at the back somewhere. As long as they get the rock off the button and, and uh, preferably get everything out from in front of the T-line, Looks like the way Jacques uh, indicated at that one, they're trying to drive this one slightly the other direction this time. Yeah, overcurled by about an inch for them to do that. Close. Oh, manages to get everything out to the forefoot. Might even have left himself shot at the back of the eight. Not that it matters who's shot right now. There is still a center guard. It does belong to Gauthier. Yeah, if you're a perfectionist, that's the thing you didn't want to do. But you did move no. all three, and you're a lot better situation than you were. I think to open up the forefoot, you were going to have to leave the one in the middle. You know, the nice thing about that, it might, it might, the nice thing might be that you left that uh, yellow stone at the top of the eight. If Kevin Cooey does manage to bury one here, there might be a double available. That was kind of a plan B call at the end, trying to hold it straight and just uh, get the tap and a bit of a roll, almost Christmas tree them. Tempting if you're Jack Gauthier here to go after the guard, I would think. I'm not sure either of those stones in the house is hurting you. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> I would have I would have already peeled it <laughs> myself. And you can peel it towards those yellows. I mean... <laughs> I'm not sure why he's standing behind the yellows. They don't matter. Yeah, you've you've still got the whole forefoot. 
and yeah, that guard is not helping. Now, and and I admit, I, I don't know the youngster real well. I haven't seen him play a lot, but the draws that we've seen him play this game, he has played the intern draw, you know, both directions, and that looks like that's going to be the draw that he's got left at the end. So it's a shot he's been playing this game. That's That's got to help him. Well, the guard's gone, and so is one yellow for a bonus. Decision here for Kevin Cooey. Do you throw the center guard and hope for a bit of a mistake or a bit of a break? Or do you just guard shot stone? You know he's going to peel the guard. But at least if you're dead in line, he can't really play both of them. Yeah, that's the rock you got to guard. That's your horse, so... Now the Not only, a bad other option, stone. only other option is you throw the guard on the center line or maybe just a shade to the broob side of the center line as they're looking at it now and hope that when Jack Oche runs it towards that stone, he actually jams it and spins it back into the middle. Your chances like that aren't great. It doesn't happen often. But, I mean, you guard this stone, Gauthier runs it off. You're going to have to bring the second one into the, your last stone into the ring somewhere, try to sit two. And your chances aren't great there either. You certainly probably didn't want to bring that that tight if you were going to leave angle. Well, if you're Jack, you, you, you're going to have a draw to the forefoot no matter what. But I don't know if there's any risk here in trying the peel and also clip shot stone, but I think the single peel would be just fine for him. You ice it so as to err on the side of caution. It'll be, uh, make sure you got enough ice that if we miss it, we miss it thin. You certainly don't want to hit the first one too thick. Brush was on right away. Doesn't look like they even made an attempt to run a stone in the rings. So just straight peels the guard. And now Kevin Cooley, Tyler Tardy, and the front end making their way down. It's where do you put the second stone? You'd love to be able to put this in a spot where he couldn't hit either one of them on the nose, unfortunately. I'm not sure there is a spot like that without leaving a pretty easy double. Yeah. I think you want to look at all the options here, but again, it's a draw to the four. I think that's what he's going to have no matter what. And draw weight hasn't quite been there for everybody. There's been a lot of draws that have been light and heavy for everybody. So that might yeah. just be what you want him to do is just I, guard up what you have. You're, you're thinking of guarding and, and letting him draw? I think I'm guarding and letting him draw just based on okay. what we've seen. I haven't seen a lot of made draws in this game. I so understand your logic, but I, I I understand your logic, but I don't think they're going to leave him the draw when he's got when he's just got to get uh, half the forefoot mm -hmm. to the middle. You know, it's one thing if you could at least affect his line, but he's got. Uh, He's got that intern draw, which is the draw that we have seen him throw a few times in both directions. Again, young guy, I don't know myself if he's got a preference for the intern, but it certainly looked like he threw that intern draw very well. You always hate to leave a guy a shot that, that you've seen him make in both directions. The question is, where can you put this to, that you make him? You want to put two shots into his head if you're playing the draw here. Do I hit one of these knowing there's a chance that... Uh, we hit it wrong, we don't score. Or do I draw? And, and where do you put this rock to put both shots into Jacques' head? They're looking at the corner of the forefoot. I'm not sure that that does it. I think if you're full forefoot on the corner, which is where they keep tapping the ice, I think he hits it all day. He'd almost have to be just nibbling the forefoot on the edge.
And then to your point, uh, Matt, you, you put it, if you're just nibbling the forefoot, well, you may as well have just guarded because you didn't make a shot any harder. Yeah, if there was a place that you could put a rock that would make the shot harder and, like you said, maybe give him more options, you want to force a miss the best you can. Well, they then keep tapping the ice that. like full forefoot, but I think you want to put this at best about half forefoot, where if he's anything on the outside trying to hit it, he rolls too far. And if he's on the inside, he's going to jam it on the red and he doesn't have far to roll through the forefoot either. I think they've opted for the guard. I mean, I don't know if you could draw around the yellow and maybe get a little bit more of the forefoot, but I think then that just leaves a double for the win. I, Yeah. It's not a great situation, but um, maybe a, maybe you're just, uh, this is a football terminology, just ice the kicker. Like, you know what you're going to do. Yeah, I know what and, you mean. Uh, I don't think it is. Uh, <laughs> Who the, knows? <laughs> there are no, I should point this out now, there are no time clocks in, in use here in Swift Current, and Kevin Cooey's always been one that, that likes to, as much as he seems like a very quiet guy, when it comes time to get into a situation like this, he will take the input from all the players and, and discuss all the options and do that before he makes his last choice here. So yeah, it it's not totally to, surprising. To be on the same page, to make sure you're not missing anything, Well, they might have had too much ice on that. Did he leave him enough of that rock to make the, the hit? He's left it wide open. That is that is completely open. You might have been thinking that, well, we'd be okay leaving him a quarter, but uh, he's got air by the guard. Half mm -hmm. a rock safely passes it by the back one. You could probably get away with a quarter and still get it by the back one. I hate to jinx it, but there is a chance that we could go to a, a next round. <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. I think you already did. I just did. Jacques Gauthier in the hacks, his final stone tied up, coming home, facing one. It is wide open, looking to make the hit. He doesn't have to stay. He's got the second shot at the back of the eight foot already. Brushers picked it up right away. He made it, cleaning it all the way down. He hits three quarters. Actually, hangs around, picks up two points. Jacques Gauthier. Picks up the 7-5 to five victory here over Kevin Cooey, and he will move on to an A-event qualifier tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock where he will play against Colton Flash. I want to thank you once again for joining us here this evening for this A-event action from the IG Wealth Management Western Showdown in Swift Current. For myself, Sean Joyce, and my partner, Matt Sussman, thanks for joining us. Good night, and we will see you tomorrow for all of the action continuing here from Swift Current. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium.